Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. After a weekend of cooking and riding, we are back with another video. This time on how to set up your Sheron suspension. This video is applicable to Sherons with the DNM rear shock and the DNM fork. The fork first came on the bikes that were shipped late winter to now. Late July bikes and onward should be coming with the RST Kilo Black Edition. Now, let's get on with the setup. Start by taking a measurement from the tip of the rear fender to the center of the rear axle while on a stand. This distance should be the same on all Sherons. Next, with the bike lean next to something, jump on it up and down to get rid of the initial stiction in the shock. Now, with the rider geared up and in their natural riding position, measure again from the tip of the fender to the center of the rear axle. Keep track of this number. Knowing that the Chiron has 8 inches of rear tire travel and we are looking for around 20-25% to sag per the factory recommendations, we want roughly 2 inches of sag. Our first measurement read 22 inches. This means that while sitting on the bike at a proper sag of 25%, our tape measure should read 20 inches or 2 inches less than your initial measurement. Use this equation to find the ideal sag for you. First, take the wheel travel of your bike for the Chiron is 8 inches. Then multiply that by your desired percent sag as a decimal. For us, this would be 0.25 or 25%. That number should be subtracted from your initial unloaded reading, giving you the number that your tape measure should read while sitting on the bike. For us, this is what using the equation would look like. Because our loaded reading was only at 19.5 inches, we want to reduce sag by turning the coil counterclockwise from the perspective of the rear. This is adding preload. Don't forget to jump up and down before the second reading. Take the second reading. This time we are at 19 and 7 eighths inches. We need to add more preload. If your coil is too tight to turn by hand, use a mallet and brass punch on the retention ring to unstick it. After some tapping, it should be turnable by hand. Time for the next reading. This time, we nailed it and we are at exactly 20 inches. Next, under the non-disc side of the fork, there will be a red valve cover. This is the main air chamber. Remove the cap and attach a high-pressure shock pump. A normal tire pump will not work for this. It looks like our starting pressure is a bit under 140 psi. We thought the fork felt soft at 165 pounds and pumped it to the maximum recommended pressure of 150 psi. Note that while unscrewing the pump you lose some pressure therefore making the pressure below 150. To compensate, add roughly 10 psi more than your desired pressure. The dial at the top of the non-disc side of the fork is your rebound adjustment which controls how fast the fork returns after compressing. We found that running this 15 out of 16 clicks from all the way in was where we liked it. On the opposite side is the preload. This controls how high in the travel you sit. From all the way out, we only turned it one half revolution in. Any more and our hands got beat up too much on the small bumps. We also noticed that this dial spins forever. Unlike the fork, the rear shock has a compression damping adjuster. This controls how hard it is to compress the shock. We found that 10 out of 20 clicks from all the way in worked best. The rebound on the shock is controlled by a little red dial at the bottom. We like the rear set at 2 out of 13 clicks out from all the way in. To demonstrate what properly set up suspension looks like, here is Cole riding over rough terrain. The bike tracks well and jumps straight and level. Next, we set the rebound way too slow in the rear and front to show you the effects of improperly set up suspension. Coming through the rough section, the suspension never has time to uncompress leaving it near the bottom of the stroke where it is most harsh. The bike will usually jump well with slow rebound however. Next, we set the rebound all the way open, which is the fastest it can be. Note that this setting is close to our preferred setup. With too quick of rebound, the bike can get darty on bumps and sometimes will unpredictably kick you on jumps, but overall this is better than having the rebound too slow. Now, we're going to load up the bikes and take them to the trail for some more testing. Suspension feels much better after the adjustments. Forks a lot firmer on the lift right there. A lot poppier. So, Riley, 
Haley's got on the Shinko Cheater 524 in the front. And I'm still running the stock ones. A little bit more traction than I do. If you consider the price of this bike, the Surdon suspension is about what you would expect to get. I'm by no means an expert on suspension, but I've done enough riding on a wide enough variety of bikes to know what I like. I'm going to start talking about the fork. My biggest gripe with the fork is the adjustability. The rebound damping on this bike is frankly pretty terrible. It has 16 clicks total, but anything more than 4 clicks into the damping and you might as well be riding with no air in the fork because it never gets back to the top of the stroke. I played around with the preload adjustment to get rid of the insane amounts of brake dive this has and to get a little bit more cushion on the big landings. Unfortunately, I was let down. The preload adjustment has no sorts of metric and it will just continue spinning until your hands get tired. I turned the preload in about 10 full rotations to see what would happen and it did feel better on the jumps and the landings but it ended up being so chattery over small bumps that I felt like I was back on some sun tour forks you'd find on a budget hard rock. The best combination I found was to use barely any preload or rebound dampening and just try to fine tune the air pressure to your style of riding. All that being said, the fork performs well enough for the money to give me pause before looking at a Fox or Marazaki upgrade especially when those run at least $1,000 at minimum. Moving on to the rear shock, I am definitely happier with this than the fork. The sag adjustment is easy and makes a world of difference. I started out running 20% sag for the jumps and drops, but after riding over bumps and blowing out corners at high speed, I loosened the preload to get a little bit closer to 25% sag, and I'm not having any problems with bottoming out still. This also helped a lot with the traction on chunder at high speeds. Um, the compression and rebound adjustment on the rear shock seems to be a bit more tunable than the fork as well. It still leaves a bit of room for improvement, but I don't see any reason to upgrade in the near future. As you can see, we took the Sherons off some pretty good sized jumps, and after properly setting up the suspension, it made even the massive overshoots not feel too bad. In the coming weeks, and in no particular order, we have planned to release a couple of videos. We plan on doing a tire video, a video talking about upgrades, a sprocket video, and a debate on whether or not these damage mountain bike trails. If there's anything you'd like to see, please let us know in the comments. We appreciate you watching, and if you like this video and are looking forward to others like it, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. I think we got separated. We'll give him Marco Polo here. Not totally sure where I went wrong. Two wrong turns in a row. Starting the, the POV off pretty good, huh? Oh yeah, the best. <laughs>